No, this is not a snow globe in hell. This video is about making carbon electrodes from gouging rods that are used in welding. This is a recreation of a technique developed by Scrap Science, so see their channel for lots of great vids. This technique uses electrolysis to strip the copper coating from the carbon welding rods. First add 60 grams of Epsom salts to 500 milliliters of water and stir until it's clear. Next insert two of the gouging rods in a beaker or glass container with the exposed carbon ends pointed up. Set your variable power supply to around 6 volts, 1.5 amps, something like that. Attach the leads of the power supply to the exposed ends of the gouging rods. One becomes the cathode, the positive is your anode. When you activate the power supply, the cathode will begin producing a lot of hydrogen bubbles as the copper sulfate forms. The copper coating exfoliates from the rod on the anode side. The more power you use, the faster the reaction. However, you have to watch out for heat. Uh, if the jar starts getting hot, uh, watch out. And also the rods themselves will, can get really hot, so be aware of that. Eventually, all the copper coating exfoliates off of the anode, and you're left with a pretty clean uh, graphite rod to use for your electrodes. The last little spots can be gotten off pretty easily. The conductivity is like uh, 0.3 ohms, which is kind of mind-blowing. For comparison, this graphite plate came in at 1.6 ohms, and this carbon felt came in at 0.7 ohms. What we do, so what do we do with all these graphite rods, you ask? How about making an aluminum air battery? Just get a piece of aluminum foil, a piece of a paper towel, some salt water, and one of your graphite rods. You actually want your paper towel to overlap the aluminum foil, but I'm too lazy to reshoot this. Dampen your paper towel with the salt water using some awkward contrivance like this until it's really nice and damp. Roll it up tight like a joint that C-3PO would make. Mash down the tail end to use as a battery connection. After connecting the battery to a multimeter, we can see that it produces 1.15 volts, which isn't too bad for what it is. It only produces around 350 microamps, so around a third of a milliamp, which isn't all that great. However, when you connect three of them in parallel, you end up with almost a whole milliamp. Connecting three of these shitty little things in series produces enough voltage to light this tiny LED. You can also filter out the copper sulfate uh, to use for something else. And that's it, the first Bolt Revolt video. Pretty radical stuff. Hope it didn't scare anybody. Be safe, y'all, and uh, keep at it. Take it easy.